How's it going, folks? Stu here. Every year, there are a couple of films dotted along the cinematic calendar that make you just want to immediately open up Airbnb, find the next available weekend, and book a holiday. I'm going to call these Airbnb Vs. Let's never actually call them those, let's carry on. One of those this year is The Eight Mountains, which is a film of many different qualities. One of those being that it's probably the record time it's taken me to pull out the Airbnb app after finishing a film, because good God, um, this is a delicious film to look at. Nature, how are you bloody doing that? How are you making things look that good? Earth? Yes, this video is starting with a direct call out to Earth. You know, you're cheating, mate. So the eight mountains, or La Otto Montan. Let's forget I even tried that. It's a new film from director Felix van Groningen and his partner Charlotte van der Meesch. He brought us Beautiful Boy most recently, um, which if you'd forgotten is great uh, and ruined my soul. But this one is a kind of quieter, bigger, more dramatic epic I suppose take from the Belgian director than his previous effort. It's adapted from a novel of the same name which I have not read but immediately do want to read because this film it just very quickly sweeps you up into this really kind of cozy comforting beautiful dramatic tale of friendship. It is really really wonderful. We meet two childhood friends at the beginning of the film and we follow their lives uh, separately and together as they grow old. It's a long old dramatic epic coming in at about two and a half hours, but I gotta say, it's one of those dramatic films which, although it's slow and it takes its time to get through the meat of the stuff it's trying to get to, I never really felt its runtime. In fact, this thing feels like a really comforting breeze of a watch. And I think a lot of that's down to just how effectively Groningen and Van der are able to pull out the essential parts of the relationship and pair those with just gorgeous, stunning, really gentle scenery. I was surprised by the choice to film it in a 4-3 aspect ratio, which is naturally a tighter crop of a frame. Especially surprising to see it for a film which takes these kind of big mountainous landscapes and makes it such an integral part of the film. Usually we'd expect, I guess, wider frames for that sort of thing. So you can really get the scope of these beautiful scenery that they're shooting in. But there's an intentional choice here to take that kind of cozy, more intimate 4-3 aspect ratio and apply it to this two and a half hour long character journey through the mountains. And I love what that does for the landscapes and the environments of this film. It, Firstly, intentionally frames its characters within the environments really, really well. I was a little bit worried that it would end up being one of those films which kind of stops and starts its emotional stuff to kind of look at the pretty scenery. I think that can sometimes be distracting. But the scenery of this thing, the environment and the look are as much an integral part of the emotions of this film as the characters that we're watching through it. And the characters that we're following in the film just feel so well painted, just so fleshed out and realised, and not in that kind of overly written screenplay way. More in the sense that we just get to see characters exist in spaces together and we get to see how those spaces impact their relationships and impact the trajectory of their individual lives. I'm always really interested in films that explore that feeling of having lifelong friends that you may go in and out of seeing for a large period of time, you know, that you spend so much time with together at one point and then can go years without seeing at a later point but still having a connection and a relationship which is just so singular and so entirely personal to that relationship so you can come back into someone's life and feel like you've never really left or that you've got things to catch up on it's I love all of that stuff. It's really interesting interpersonal stuff that if it can be explored effectively in a film is usually a surefire way to my heart and a surefire way to make my tears start rolling down my face. And everyone's doing great work in the film as well. I really connected with both the central characters, which I don't need to explain is obviously essential for a film like this. If we're going to follow a relationship for two and a half hours on screen, you better hope that the people you're watching are engaging and are able to mine the emotional stuff for everything it needs to be mined for. Luca Marinelli and Alessandro Borghi are both doing great work and are both bringing different things to their different characters in the film. And I loved their friendship. I love watching it evolve and I love watching it sort of tear at each other and, and pull apart and tug and pull. I want to talk as well about the way that the directors are also able to use sound in the film really effectively to create an atmosphere and to create a space to explore all the emotions in the film. But the audio work in this film, be it the score and the musical accompaniments in the moments of the film or the actual sound design 
being up in a mountain and hearing all of the things around the characters, it's all great and it really does sort of tune you into the location of the film in an essential way. I hate to sound like a broken record here, but I think it all comes back to the environment and the space of these films. It's in the bloody title of the thing. And I loved hearing the spaces that these characters are in just as much as I loved looking at that space. And the musical choices felt particularly moving in their kind of sparsity. It's not a film which I feel ever overbears its welcome with its musical score. Every song in the film creeps in at just the right point. So big props to Daniel Norgren who did the music here. Just fantastic musician and I'm definitely going to be overplaying a lot of this score on my Spotify, that's for sure. I think with it being such a dramatic epic, I guess, and a long character piece, going in and out of certain points within the story for these characters can sometimes mean that certain moments maybe feel a little bit underwhelming compared to others or that certain moments feel like they perhaps drop into the narrative when they should do as opposed to when they feel like they organically need to. It never fully falters in that regard, so I want to be clear, this it's not a complete problem with the film, but I do really feel like specifically towards the end of the second hour of this thing, it would have ended, I suppose, in a very sweet spot for me personally. I was just fully into it and then it kind of kept creeping along a little bit and I feel like the actual ending we end up with, even though it is effective and it is impactful and it's poignant and moving, in its own right, it, it, it does feel a little bit like it's less of an ending than the ending I was expecting it to go to at a certain point. Can you tell I'm trying not to spoil things? Good God. And there is this kind of constant threat that the film might teeter into repetitive nature. But I want to be clear though, those negatives with the film, I think are, it's going to sound like a cop-out, almost essential for the film to work as it does work. Because I guess the simplistic way of looking at an alternate way of fixing those things is to kind of tighten it up. And, and trim certain things down. But I actually really crucially think that this film is a film which needs to be allowed to expand and sort of just wander around for a bit. If it was a tighter and more concise film, it might not have had the same sprawling epic emotional impact as it ends up having. So it's a tricky point to land there, I guess, in terms of criticism. But ultimately this thing was a really affecting, really moving, gorgeous, cozy, dramatic epic of a film and I really really did love my time with it. You better bet your little booty I am planning a trip to the Italian Alps. Don't care how long it takes to save up. I am a man of a uh, little money but I'll get there because good god this film is gorgeous. You might say Stu you shouldn't base your life moves on what you see in films uh, but the mountains look nice and me goey, me goey to the mountain. I'd probably crumble uh, without a due sickness and get very terrified of the heights. God knows some of the scenes in this film almost gave me a little bit of vertigo. How are they still standing there? Anyway, what about you guys? Have you seen The Eight Mountains yet? It's out in UK cinemas now. I think it's been out for a while in various other places around the world. So if you've had a chance to check the film out, let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. We'll have a little chat. Of course, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see me talk about more shit, go ahead and click subscribe. The button is down there for that, as well as my socials, my Twitter, my Instagram, my letterbox. Follow me down there if you wanna. I will see you guys very soon for some more thoughts on more films. But until next time, it's Airbnb time. We're going. Thank you.